Hi guys, uh, welcome to another conference with uh, MrLopezClasses.com. Uh, uh, today I have a, a guest speaker uh, in my classroom. Uh, the guest speaker is uh, Christian Cadol and uh, his wife, Claudia. Christian was uh, my student uh, a couple of years ago and uh, he studied the marine program basically because uh, he wanted to be prepared to live in a sailboat, specifically in a catamaran. And uh, he studied the program completely, he passed uh, all the courses, uh, he took uh, a lot of uh, certifications, and now uh, he's living in the boat with, uh, with Claudia, and uh, he's doing a great, great job. I don't know if you remember that uh, video conference uh, with uh, Christian. Christian explained uh, the procedure to convert the boat into uh, a hybrid boat. Uh, he installed the solar panels, those solar panels, and uh, he installed all the Victron uh, equipments and he converted the boat in a, in a hybrid boat. Today, in the, in the, in the visit uh, of uh, Christian uh, in my classroom, uh, we talk about all of those topics and uh, we talk about uh, other, other jobs that uh, he did in the boat uh, he worked on the diesel engines, he worked on, on the power steering system, on the electronics, and uh, we shared the experience of uh, him and, and Claudia, and both of them, they talked with uh, my students in the classroom, uh, they shared a lot of experience. That was a great, great conversation, and uh, I hope uh, you guys, you enjoy this conversation, because this is a great uh, opportunity to learn from uh, other uh, couple of persons that uh, they change their life completely because they are living right now in the sailboat. They sell the apartment uh, in Miami and uh, they are living in the boat. Uh, now they want to return to the north and uh, come back to Puerto Rico and they are, they are passing their life. They are enjoying their life. Uh, I am happy to present, to introduce uh, Christian Cattle, Claudia, and uh, Danny Rodriguez. Uh, we, we, we have a, this wonderful conversation. I hope, guys, you enjoy this wonderful conversation. But, uh, let, let me introduce uh, uh, Chris, uh, his wife. Uh, Chris uh, started to study during the pandemic, the same program, here, with exactly the same. And, uh, and he studied, organized every day here in class, asking questions, uh, preparing projects, no? In your boat. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah. you, 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 you solve it uh, at the same time problems in your boat, no? Yeah, and you are... prepare the boat with, with yeah. air exactly. for the trip. What's yeah. nice. Especially as you come from Sparky to, to where you're at now. <laughs> <laughs> I call it Sparky because uh, during the, the DC class you sparked up a yeah. battery pretty good. <laughs> so yeah. his link name was Sparky nope. for a little bit. That was him. That was him. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's me. I'm the famous one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, nice, nice. Uh, uh, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure that you'll be here. But uh, I want to share with uh, our students uh, how important is simple concept that you, you say in the class, ah, that's too simple. Oh, no, in the middle of the ocean, that's very important, no? For oh, example, yeah. how important is the ground, no? Oh, sure. The majority so, of the problem is bad ground, no? Yeah, we had, actually, I was uh, communicating with Mr. Lopez. We were anchored in a really bad uh, electrical storm and oh, the yeah. lightning was, it was still like eight or nine miles away, but it was just an incredibly strong storm. Uh -huh. And for whatever reason, my tachometer, it was lighting up. Like, there, And then like a millisecond later, there'd be a, a lightning. With bolt. everything off. Yeah, with everything off. So I, this is just like the craziest thing. What's, you know, what could this possibly, and it was only, I have two engines. So it was only the, the port engine that this was happening. So Only the tachometer. Yeah, just like like if I had pressed the, the start button. So I don't know, I asked Mr. Lopez what could this be? And so he guided me through it to check all the grounds and what it ended up being, because it never happened before, is actually uh, the one ground on that engine that on the, or the, the negative that ran from the alternator, the nut wasn't tight. So for whatever reason, once I tightened that nut, it went away, and then also in the beginning when I would start it, the alternator wouldn't charge but the battery. But you, you, you know why we discovered that? Because uh, what is the element 
in the in the boat that is related with the tachometer. Go to the alternator. I said to him, go to the alternator. Da, 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 and we discovered, no? Yep, exactly. So I would never have checked that because it was under a dust cap, that nut. Why would I check that? You know, I had put it in and I thought I tightened it, but I guess I just finger tightened it, so yeah, lots of things. But uh, what was nice because uh, he sent to me a video in the middle of the storm, mm -hmm. in the middle of the night. Hey, Mr. Lopez, the boat is mm -hmm. everything off. And the tachometer is on. Yes, <laughs> a ghost. Right. Yes. <laughs> the ghost, yeah. The ghost. The, that was a, a, a surprise, no? Yeah. 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 Things like that always. And, and we had to get the boat ready, so it was very good. The diesel class helped me. I took the whole engine apart, basically put it. Yeah, he did a great everything, project. overhauled it. Mm -hmm. And the engine looks like new now. And I'd like to say, after this class, I think I can probably sell the boat for more than bought it for because of everything I learned here. And it's probably, the, the boat's 14 years old, but I think it's the best maintained boat out there. We put in solar panels, yeah. we put a lot of work yeah. into David that. Yeah, David Thomas, so you yeah. put nice yeah. solar panels. So everything I learned here about the difference between all the battery uh, um, types. But this is another is part of the, of the question that I have uh, for Chris uh, and you, Mark. Is that uh, uh, the solar system is not exactly like the, the theory say and the people say. No, Chris? Yeah. Especially because uh, the sun is not constant. So you got three days of storm. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah, so what do you do then, right? So we have a generator, but there's also, on a beautiful day like this, if there's just any kind of shading on that panel, what ends up happening is it's like a battery bank. Imagine you have a battery bank in, in series, and one of the batteries is dead. So what happens to the rest of the battery then? That it's dead. So then I, for the longest time, I was like scratching my head. I'm like, I got 1,500 watts of solar here, and how come the most I can get is maybe 800? Well, it, the boom on the sailboat, the thing that holds the sail, it was on top of the solar panel. So the shade from that boom was basically shorting out all the solar panels on the roof of the boat. So I had to think about that a long time, and, and then finally now we put the boom all the way on the other side. And you know, that, 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 simple things. Yeah, yeah simple, simple things. things. Incredible, no? But you start to think, oh, they sold me bad solar panels. You know, you go all over Incredible, the place. No? Yeah, things like that. Simple things. things yeah. Yeah. Simple, simple, no, simple things. Sometimes are the ones that are the things yeah. that you need to fix. Sometimes you get overwhelmed. It's the cabling, sometimes basic stuff. Yeah. So you have to, yeah. it's a lot of the trial and error. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta sit back and say, all right, let me think about what I'm doing here. And yeah, think not just go of, right into it. Outside the box. You yeah. go right into it, You people always assume the worst. And, and so what you find out, it's just like you said, a little just, simple. Yeah. Just like the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the old thing, just as simple yeah, as that. Exactly. You want, oh my God, I got the whole yeah. thing going on. Right. I would never have been able to figure that out if you hadn't told me, oh, check the whole thing, you know? <laughs> Uh, one, one thing, uh, the, the, the battery bank for the inverter is the same house battery bank in your boat. Yes. Correct. Uh -huh. And it's the lithium. Yes. It's lithium. Okay. And you have another group, no? Other group for cranking? Correct. So each engine has AGM. Batteries. AGM. AGM. And uh, you have another ex exclusive for the, the generator? Yes. And you have another for the, uh, the anchor? No. No. That's connected. Uh, that's that's connected. Yeah. Uh, those are the battery banks. But the, the, those battery banks are different, no? Lithium, a, AGM, yep. and, and AGM. Exactly. Okay, and, uh, and how do you chart those three different groups? Well, that, that's really interesting because it's different voltage that you have to Different uh, voltage? The, the house is 24. No, they're, sorry, they're, they're, but the charging voltage is different. Oh, they're yeah, all 12 yeah. volt, but the charging voltage on the lithium is it's higher, that's how it is, than the AGM. The, the, the rate of charge. The rate of charge, exactly. So it's fast. So the lithium batteries, also the, the charging, there's like a curve. The lithium batteries can take tremendous amounts of amperage. Uh, you know, you can pump 100, 200 amps in there all at the same time, and when you're running the generator that or on shore power, that's what's happening. The, if before we had AGM batteries, you can't do that. The charging curve is different, and there's a float charge at the end, and trickle charge to maintain it so it's a completely different curve so that charger 
has to work differently. So you can't have one charger and charge both types of batteries with the same charger at the same, the same it's not way. Possible. It's not possible. So what we have there is we have a DC to DC uh, um, a converter from, uh, from Victron. And what it basically does is it takes the power from the house bank and converts it to that same charging curve at the same rate that's required by the AGMs to make sure that the starter batteries, which we don't use our engines a lot, uh, is well maintained. And same with the, with the generator. Oh, this is very important. The, the uh, other important thing, all of those group of batteries, the negatives are together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, the other thing that, you know, I know you're, you're, I don't know if that's this class, but the other thing that really uh, is very important is the grounding on the whole system and also the corrosion that exists in the grounding system and if that's not all connected properly and well maintained and I have to constantly with a starter and make sure that everything's uh, corrosion free. There's a lot of interaction between the electrical system and the, the problems that we have with corrosion. So that's usually, that's probably the biggest problem that we encounter. Uh, but uh, you create the bonding system in your boat, no? Because yeah, so, so exactly. So it's in, the yeah. European manufacturers, they don't, the, those boats, they don't generally have bonding systems like the U.S. Uh, boats do. Now, we had uh, uh, bronze through holes that were ungrounded for, you know, whatever, 10 years that we had it. And, you know, what I learned here and what I read, read elsewhere is that's really not a good idea. And so, uh, you know, they could... You won't even know there's something wrong with it. And we actually had a, somebody that this happened to, and he had he ran his air conditioner all the time. And then one day he goes down there to close the seacock, and the whole seacock just broke off and through hole, and the boat started. Can you imagine? <laughs> so, so it was so. What happens is, what is it, the, the, the nickel? I think gets it comes out. Or uh, no, it? it's, it's because uh, uh, the alloy have a lot of zinc. Zinc. That's what comes out. Zinc. So the zinc brass. comes out, and then boom, it breaks off. So we changed everything to these Marillon uh, through holes, which are like fiberglass through holes, so we don't have to deal with that. Those through holes. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Matter. You have to exercise them all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now you, you get barnacles in them. Yep. So we have to every week, you know, we're opening and closing these things to make sure no barnacles uh, build up inside of them. But there's. You know, there's a lot of little things like this, and in the community, the cruising community that we uh, spend time with down there, there's all different kinds of people with boats. Some boats are, you know, 50 years old. There's even a guy mm -hmm. uh, who sailed over from uh, Genoa, from Italy. He bought a boat that was like derelict. It was a museum boat. It was a, a like a, a brigantine. It's wooden boat. Wooden a brigantine. big wooden boat. You know, like 120 feet long, and the government wanted to get rid of it, so he just got it. But he used to have, a, he used to build boats, so he knows a lot. And he sailed that over. And interestingly enough, the the way that you ground a wooden boat is different. Also, a lot a lot of aluminum boats there, so the grounding that they have to do on the aluminum boats is different. Also, we had a friend who had a steel boat from like the 70s, and he was explaining oh, to us what they had to do. To, you know, to ground that boat to make sure that there's no uh, galvanic corrosion that eats through the hull. And so there's just so many different types of boats and types of problems. And I guess, uh, you know, the takeaway from that is every boat's going to have problems. They're going to have them every single day. There's just so much opportunity to fix things. People think, oh, you know, you went and sailed away. You're just sitting there drinking, you know, pina coladas and watching the sun go down. Not that, there's things just breaking all the time. And you really have to, you can't, I don't think you can really focus on just one thing. Oh, I'm just gonna, you know, I don't know, do outboards, for example. You, you can't really troubleshoot whatever the customer tells you what the problem is without knowing the whole thing and how all those pieces fit together. So when we're with our uh, friends in the cruising community, there's a lot of always talk about, oh, did you have this problem and what did you do to fix it? Like a lot of generator problems. We all have generator problems. A lot of problems with the generator Yeah, problems. yeah. What's the most common problem that you have with the generator? It's always heat related. Yeah. So, so it's overheating? Always, always, always. So it's either the exhaust elbow or you it's remember? the heat exchanger. 
you know, people, they say they flush it, but they don't really flush it, or they don't know how to flush it. Or never flush it. Or, exactly. So it's always heat or impeller. It's like, it's usually pretty much, yeah, in water flow. It's the raw water flow that goes through there. The belts also, they get loose and, you know, they don't think to check it. We have a lot of problems with just the design on our Yanmars that the belts, they just always uh, get loose after a while. So I could see like a lot of dust in it. And when I notice that dust, it's like, oh, okay, I gotta tighten this up or change the belt. Uh, and just regular maintenance, yeah, you know. Uh, we have the engines we have, they have these things called sail drives, which it's instead of like a shaft, it's sort of like right, on an outlet. The the exactly. And that design is like just horrible actually. So you have to change that gear oil every 100 hours, but you have to change the engine oil every 200 hours. It's nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. So 100 hours, what is that, you know? So it's kind of like a funny thing. And then the way that you do it is also, it's not very, very thorough because the only way to do it is to actually drain it from the bottom and the boat has to be out of water. So that doesn't work. So you have to come up with like inventive ways, you know, with the oil suction pump to try and get all that oil out of there. So we have a lot of conversations out there with that. The other one is, hey, well, everybody has toilet issues. Oh man, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's always oh, like you meet new people. And, uh, especially you because uh, because the people is uh, it's not a focus that uh, no paper on the toilet. Yeah, yeah, no and, paper. And it doesn't matter what the manufacturer says. You know, they'll tell you, oh, this macerator. You know, no, no. Oh, they throw like whatever in there. And that, that's not true. No. Things build up in the pipes, then you know, in the hoses. And yeah, head, the heads are probably yeah, generated. Yeah, it's a lot of problems. was to tackle yeah. this on the least. Yeah. The yeah. Of the yeah. yeah. That's usually yeah. always yeah. on the bottom yeah. of the list. Yeah. Even yeah. our shop, I'm like, $1,000 an hour for the <laughs> yeah. 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 Before we left. That's a shitty job. <laughs> That's a shitty job, absolutely. <laughs> those, those hoses, they get permeable, permeable after a while. Like the, the, the white ones. Smell, the white ones, the smell comes through them. Even though they're not dripping or anything like that, there's like microscopic little holes and so the bilge area starts to smell like shit. And so I bought those hoses before, like a year and a half ago and I was gonna change them. I still have them. I just like don't open up the bilge and like throw some air freshener in there and it's like a job I don't want yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of opportunities because uh, even though the, the, in the cruising community people are hands on, um, they're always looking for advices, and then there's always people looking for uh, uh, mechanics, services that can be offered, and, and they're willing to pay, right? Because they for, they have deadlines. And there are some people that they are uh, cruising, mostly Europeans, that do like nine months, but then they leave their boat, and they want a good mechanic or somebody to take care of the boat, right? So there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, and then for them, it doesn't matter if it costs a little bit more, they can pay the services because they have deadlines and they don't want to move to other countries. Like we have some friends that, in order for them to be serviced, uh, they needed to go to Aruba, they couldn't stay in Curaçao, even though in Curaçao there are more facilities. Why? Because there was not a mechanic, a person that could do it, he was in Aruba, right? Yeah. So then it's things like that, right? So if you are ready, readily available, if you uh, know your stuff, you know, and yeah, then you, you can have, help, you way. have a job you oh, know, yeah. left and right. Yeah. Especially in that community, everybody's gonna to want to be your friend. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and it's you know, like I said, the generator issues that those are big ones. So we spend a lot of time, uh, you know, talking about those. I'm still not at the point where I'm, uh, I guess, confident enough to charge people for my services. I'll suggest things, I'll help them out, but I don't charge for it yet. And the, and the reason why I say that is because I haven't had the benefit of actually doing an internship like many of you will probably be doing, working directly every single very day on things. And you know, repetition is a, a very good um, teacher, I think. You know, you, like some of the, uh, you know, I had a problem with my outboard on the dinghy. And the first time I took the carburetor apart, oh man, it took me like a whole day to do that. You know, all the little parts and cleaning it up because we had some problem with ethanol in the gasoline. and But then now I could like do it in my sleep. And that's like after, I don't know, I did that. Like I had to do it three times. I had to clean that thing to get it running again. So I, I think that part of what you're gonna be doing 
in your uh, careers that's invaluable, you know, actually learning things hands-on, uh, that's, that's really valuable. Uh, but you can't go out there and just try and learn something uh, from, you know, just without a, the foundations, you know, without learning these things, without taking those ABYC certifications, those are important. Uh, you know, they have down in the islands, not really, not anybody's really certified in that, so most of the people there are uh, self-trained, let's, let's say that. And, you know, they know how to do things. I'm not saying they don't know how to do things, and they're certainly very inventive in how they do things. But uh, I think, you know, what you guys are learning here and, and what you're being taught is is just incredibly useful, especially now, you know, with those a million boats that are registered out there. Most people don't have any idea what they're doing. And they, and they, don't, they don't want to really, necessarily. You know, so uh, I think your, your skill set is just really, really, and needed, and it's a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's, like, it, it's a really good uh, It's rewarding. Quality. It's rewarding. Because you fix something, you fix it with your own hands, you learned it, you did it, you know, and, and then you'll grow with that. And uh, yeah, and I also think when we took our boat out down the Miami River, and uh, you know, some things that I couldn't do myself, I mean, the hourly rate is good, and the people that are do doing the work, they know what they're doing. It takes years to do this. This isn't something that you can just, you know, like I tried to do, learn in one year. You have to learn this over over many, many years. There, oh, there, there. I'm going to ask different question. It's important for them. Oh, there, there. Common, 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 common problem is the fuel in other, in other places, no? Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember when you said to me that video, <laughs> one gallon, one bottle of uh, fuel and half is water. Yeah. No? And, 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 and in other place you send a video that is mixed uh, the water with the fuel. Yeah. And they say that's good fuel, no? Yeah, exactly. We had a friend, friend down in, uh, who was down in St. Thomas. And uh, he, this was in 20, yeah, last year, 2021. So he filled up his tanks. He was down there in Curacao with us and he came to me. We just met him. And he, he comes to me with this this bottle, like a water bottle. And he, what do you think was, about this? What do you this? think about this? And it was like this weird, milky, like almost like honey yeah. color fluid. And I, that doesn't look right. The, the fuel in the US, the diesel fuel is, you know, dyed with pink. Uh, and the rest of the world is not. It's supposed to be like, you know, an amber color, but it's clear. They had it. So they had. They had put some additive in there, fuel stabilizers, which you can get anywhere, you know. Stabil is like a big brand. And all that does is kind of put gel in there to keep the water Mix from, from settling to the bottom of the tank, right? So that's all it does. So it's like making a jello, basically. But that's not good. The water's not gone, you know. I mean, you read the bottle and it sounds like, oh, there's some magic thing in there and it makes the water dissipate into the sky or something. That's not what it does. So, you know, the, I actually reached out to, to Mr. Lopez and said, so what do you think about that? It can, I mean, I know it's supposed to, you know, keep the, from, uh, from, from the water from separating, but should you run this through uh, your engine? So what did you tell me? No, it's basically because they added additives to keep emulsified the water with the fuel. No, but that's not good because uh, that gel uh, clogged injectors, uh, fuel lines. Yep. That's not good. That's mm -hmm. catastrophic. That's the problem. Yeah. And you have constantly a little why smoke, why smoke, why smoke yeah. with the engine is running. Yeah. Did, did you build a filtration system to uh, when you take the fuel from outside source into the boat? Well, actually, we found a guy down there for him that bought all the fuel, took all the fuel off of his boat because it was he still. Had fuel like, the tanks. It was like 90 mm -hmm. gallons of that fuel, fuel that he had left. He had just filled them. Yeah. And, uh, he burned that diesel because he had a dry cleaning business. So he, he used that fuel to like heat whatever dryers he had. So the guy bought the fuel, then he went and got new fuel. But then the problem is the bottom of the fuel tanks, they're aluminum fuel tanks. So they end up having algae in it. And the algae is like impossible to get rid of. So we had that problem too. And then, that, then the aluminum fuel tanks start to get uh, poultice corrosion in it. And then they start to leak, and you have to replace the fuel tank. So yeah, you had to replace one. Oh tank, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like yeah, we did it it's like a, yeah, I remember. a snowball. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And 
and then also on the uh, gasoline, we had a problem. We bought some fuel here, and I bought it at the marina, but you know, it didn't say at the marina that it was Rec 90. So I got it. I got to think there was some ethanol in there. But we had the boat. We were working on the boat for like a month or so. So I didn't use that little dinghy engine. And then we're over there in the, in the Bahamas where there's nothing in it. Engine just doesn't work. So you know, I had to. That's where I had to uh, clean that carburetor several times. But the the ethanol had separated, and the ethanol ate up all the fuel lines. Yeah and the hose that comes from the fuel tank so I can replace all of that. And then it's separated and when I poured out the fuel tank, I have like a filter that's uh, a very good filter to have on a boat. It separates, uh, you know, water. Well, that of you. Exactly, and it's like an amazing thing. And then I poured that out and the whole bottom of this, this filter is like this big, that you poured into, this much was this weird, you know, I gotta think it's ethanol. It's ethanol. But this very bad fluid that was just like screwing things up. And that was in the bottom of the tank. So I, I cleaned the carburetor and it would run for, you know, like a little bit and then boom, same problem again. So a lot of fuel issues over there and I, but here too. Here, if you don't put that Rec 90 in your outboard, it's just a complete total disaster. If you yeah. that. Yeah. Well, the, the, the ethanol fuel was never designed that purpose. It was for a car, you use your fuel all the time so it doesn't have time to do phase separation. What you're talking about is phase separation. Yeah, exactly. When it sits for a long period of time, the ethanol, the water, and the fuel separate. Um, you know, like I said, the reason I asked you if you had a filtration system is that's something I made at the shop so that way I can suck fuel go to three filters into a tank and back three filters back into my tank. Oh, that's that's a that's, really good system. That's what I, I did that for my shop and, and that's probably what I would do with the sailboat the same way. Yeah, no, no, they, there's, there are companies out there that build exactly that. Yeah. And then you have like a bunch of Raycor filters in it, yeah. it goes through and then you yeah, pump it Yeah, it's three in the line. I got a, a pump uh, from Amazon, uh -huh. 50 PSI, because I wanted high pressure to yeah. make it move quickly. And uh, it, it sucks through the three filters into a holding tank. Uh -huh. And then once the holy tank's full, I reverse it uh -huh. going back to the three filters after I drain the filters. And yeah, you know, we had actually just before we left, uh, we, we have to run the generator every now and then when there's no sun for a number of days. So I ran it and all of a sudden the generator just pff, stopped running. So luckily I know this problem. So what it is, is the, uh, the, the fuel um, pickup, uh, rod I guess the thing that it goes into the, the, the top peel of, hose. yeah the, the, it's not a hose it's a like a rod that goes into the bottom of the tank it's uh, screwed yeah. into the yeah. tank right yeah. yeah so the very ba bottom of this rod has like these four little holes in it and what had happened is over time and this happens that algae even though I keep the tank full it dies and then it settles to the bottom and then that pickup gets clogged and it doesn't matter whether you have a lift pump on it or whatever, it's not gonna be able to suck that, that uh, dead algae through there. So, you know, and we have all kinds of Raycor filter in there and the filter looked okay, that wasn't dirty. It was just that that dead algae was in there. Like little things like that. And you think, you know, most people probably wouldn't know that. So if you get, got like a call from somebody, oh, you know, I can run my generator and just cocks out all the time. You kinda, I guess you go, Backwards, you start always at, at the source. So uh, that's that's so basically what I did. At the source. Yeah. yeah. So it's like okay, it's not an electrical issue; it's fuel issue. It's really only those two things. And then okay, starting off with that, this is what the problem was. I took that rod out and I, I tried to make my wife sick with it by running after her with a bunch of dead algae on a stick. So <laughs> how, how do you control the algae in the things? Well, we put that. Um, Bioside in there, but the bioside kind of you know, if the algae stays alive, it floats on top, but uh -huh. then it keeps it, it keeps well, growing, yeah. so it doesn't matter whether you keep that tank full or not. So you have to kill it, and then it settles to the bottom. So, really, the only way to solve that issue is to suck the bottom of the tank out. Uh -huh. And how you remove that material? Yeah, so you have to you basically you do what you do. Yeah. We, have a, we have a lift pump on the tank so I'm able to run that lift pump push uh, the fuel through Raycor put that into another container because we have a separate uh, fuel tank just for the generator it's only like 16 gallons so I can put the clean fuel 
into some jerry cans. And then when I, when I get to the bottom, the hole, the problem is the hole's only this big. So it's difficult for me to get in that and clean out the bottom of that, yeah. uh, that dead yeah. algae. You know, so I had like an inline fuel filter between the lift pump and the fuel tank. So all these filters, but the, the lot of issues with yeah. uh, fuel stability and quality. But uh, another important thing is uh, run the engine and generator periodically. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 That's, that's so we had, that's, that's interesting you should say that because we hadn't used the generator before we left since like, I guess, October of the year before because we didn't need it and, you know, it's cool here, so what do we need the generator for? So I hadn't used the generator in like five or six months. And then it wouldn't, it wouldn't produce any voltage, none. This brand new generator had like 150 hours on it. Yeah, he's new. Yeah, yeah so, so scratching my head. So I call up uh, the manufacturer, Northern Lights, and they're like, oh, you got to flash it. So then he taught me how to flash it, which maybe, I don't know if you ever heard of That's an interesting yeah. thing that Northern Lights do, how to flash a generator. That happens a lot, actually. So it loses its... Uh, um, excitation. Its excitation, exactly. So you remember? it's like the magnet is dead. And so you have to you have to flash that you have to and you need to exit tight by yourself exactly so you have to you can use the the battery the 12 volt battery to do that you can use a power probe that's a very good tool to do that because you need it just to do it for like a second mm -hmm. and then it's supposed to work well in my case it didn't work and i had it with the uh the manufacturer's uh service uh, company who's uh, was, was still right. under warranty and so we tried flashing it and then he said 12 wasn't enough so we went all the way up to 36 volt and tried to flash it still didn't work what it turns out was that the uh, voltage control board which controls how much voltage goes comes out off the uh, generator that was uh, broken so it wasn't necessarily because of time either that I hadn't used it. It was because it wasn't manufactured correctly. Mm -hmm. It's very hot in that engine room. Yeah. And even though, you know, we have all these blowers and everything, mm -hmm. it could be like 140 degrees down in that, in that, uh, in the shell of the housing of the generator. And it didn't have a heat sink on it. This, this, it's a circuit board, you know, like on your computer. So your computer has a little fan, right? That keeps that circuit board. So this didn't have anything like that. So interestingly enough, they wanted to kind of get me to pay for all this. And I said, well, that's interesting. You just sent me uh, a replacement board and it has a heat sink on it. And the old one didn't. So you probably have some kind of an issue like this that's ongoing, right? Uh -huh. And so then they shut up and <laughs> gave me the, the stuff for free. But I think that's like a big problem too, is uh, whenever you install something like a generator, you have to make sure that there's not just water circulation, but also there has to be enough circulation from the air. You have to make sure that there's yeah. not like salt the ventilation water that you get is, in there. Is critical. Yeah, yeah, that was. A, I, you don't have fans in the. the oh, we we do, but it wasn't enough because that that where that uh, voltage control board is, the control uh, box, is right on top of the uh, the, mm. the, um, the stator. Yeah. So it gets really hot in there. Oh, and, wow. and that's their design, you know, and, and maybe it's and a, you need it's to a be careful with this because uh, if uh, in the future the area have a no good ventilation, uh, the back end, the winding could be affected. Yeah. And uh, one day you call to me, <laughs> I have 60 volts in one phase and 40 volts in the other phase. When you check with the megometer, the phases are yeah. up. Exactly. And it's because the humidity. Uh, damage the varnish on the on the on the winding yeah so that's actually why we had to get a new generator so it was exactly that mm -hmm. so the windings had been damaged over time correct and it was the engine was fine but when it comes to generator actually that's the enemy expensive. of the back end is the humidity yeah it's the humidity so yeah. some water had gotten in there and then we actually uh, found the culprit the, the, the last ret where this generator was there wasn't a gasket around it so when we were like in rough seas or something water would splash in there and then it would get somehow into that generator and it would splash around in the bottom and at one point there was also the raw water pump had just like a tiny little leak in it 
so it was dripping. Mm -hmm. So then when we would start the generator, if there's some wave action, that water basically splashed into the stator and just shorted it out. No, that's not good. Yep. That's so, not good. Be careful with that. Other, other thing that uh, is, uh, is a common uh, problem is uh, the pedestals in different marinas and the power because uh, the boat of uh, Chris is uh, configured actually for uh, 120 single phase American power, 60 hertz. And uh, what happens when you visit arenas 50 hertz? Yeah, so uh, in, in first we first came across this in Dominican Republic and never trust those pedestals. That's one thing I, I say to you in class. Never ever trust them. Yeah. They're, they always have some faulty wiring. We had our boat for years here. We're here, guys. And they always do. And so that was like one of the first takeaways. And when we had our boat here in Matheson Hammock, that was one of the first things I did. Is, oh, let me go check, you know, if the power's all right here. And we did have an electrical problem in that marina here, which caused a lot of damage. So there's issues with that. But down in Dominican Republic, you know, we had a, it was, it's, um, Two, 240, uh, yeah, 230, 50 230, hertz. 50 hertz. So it's 50 hertz on both 60 hertz. So I had to go there with a multimeter and I was testing it in the, 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 the wide pigtail that splits that uh, 230 into two uh, 110s. It, it doesn't split it harmoniously. So it's not like each one's 115. Explain why one has more than the other. But yeah, because uh, those Y's, basically that that triangle in the middle, is a is a voltage divider. Yes. No voltage and amps divider. Uh, you have 230, 50 hertz, 50 amps, and uh, it's supposed to that divided in 115, 115, 50 hertz each one, and uh, 25 amps and 25 amps. But really, really, when you check, mm, you don't have 115 and 115. You have 130 here and 105 here in the other one. No. Yeah. All right, uh, you remember? This is because the neutral, the neutral at the pedestal is no good. You remember when the voltage is not equal? It's because it's a, it's a neutral at the at the source of the power. Exactly. So it's like every marina is different. So, uh, and, and it's always funny when we pull into the marinas down there. Then I, the first thing I do before I plug anything in there, I go out with my multimeter and the the dock master. That's like, the recommendation. Me, like, what are you doing? I'm like. Hey, sorry. I know this is like a beautiful marina place yeah. or whatever, and it looks great. But I, and your pedestal is nicely painted and everything, but I don't trust it. And and more times than than not, there's a problem. Yeah. And so other other thing is, you hear that the people say, oh no no, and your body is fifty hertz, but uh, uh, I I have fifty hertz in the pedestal in the pedestal. No problem. Run everything with fifty hertz. Nope, so you have everything on, on our boat at least, it's all 60 hertz. So uh, what, I guess the biggest consumer of electricity we have on board are the two air conditioning units that we have. So there's 1600 B2 units and they draw about you know 10 amps, 15 amps. Uh, actually when they, uh, when you start the compressor, there's a surge and it jumps up to like 30 amps uh, for a brief moment the, the of time. The peak. The peak, exactly. And so I had to check on uh, Dometic's website to make sure that it could run on both 60 and 50. And so you see on the spec sheet for that air conditioner that says 50 to 60 hertz. So, but there are some manufacturers that it's just 60 or just 50. One thing that you can never do is if you have a 50 hertz component, if you plug it into 60 hertz, yeah. it's just gonna burn out all the engine, the little motors uh, in the air conditioner or whatever you have. Then there's other things that we have on board, like you know, coffee maker, let's say, or an air fryer or something like that. You know, they they can just run on 60. So when you plug into the pedestal, the interesting thing is the charger inverter that, and most of them are this way. They they have a pass through component. So whatever that power is that's coming into the boat, it's going straight yeah. to basically your demand. And so there's, it's not like it's going to the charger and then the charger's charging the battery and then you're drawing out your you know, 120, 60. It's not that, it goes straight through. So you can burn all those things on your boat very quickly if, uh, if you do that. So we have a, a very, I guess, um, a detailed process when we plug in on what we do, we check the pedestal, we 
never have anything plugged. We have all, all the AC components, the breakers off, so nothing is on during that How time. How do you check the pellets? Do you check uh, hot with neutron, hot with neutron, hot with ground, and hot with ground? Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's, that's the process. Right? That's the process. And then I, I don't just do it at the pedestal. I also do it where, at, um, the, where I put the, 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 outlet. the outlet on my boat. Yeah, okay. What's the most common problem you see in the pedestals? It's it's no neutral. It's, no neutral. It's that. It's that. And then I also we had a lightning strike here some years ago, and so I bought like a surge protector that goes, uh, in, uh, that's in line, and that surge protector it's it's pretty smart. It tells me if there's a problem. Like it'll there's like a little LCD screen. It'll say you know no ground or reverse polarity. I've had reverse polarity in, in some of these balls before. And you would never know that there's reverse polarity unless you went there with uh, you know, your multimeter or if you have this device. So that, that's, that's really important. Uh, did you have that issue, reverse polarity yeah, in some yeah, cases? Yeah, we did. Um, yeah, be careful with the reverse polarity because uh, uh, when, when uh, the LED of reverse polarity is activated, it's because your neutral in your boat is hot. Mm -hmm. We also have wind generators on the boats. How, how do you like the wind generator? Is it worth it? It's to us. It's, it's like I would probably chop me. it off because yeah. it doesn't really do anything yeah. for us. That's it's like supposed, the second person's told me. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed it to create 100 little. watts, but then you need like 30 mile an hour wind. You know, so it's we do get storm. them in the storm, right? In, in other words, if you depend yeah. on the wind, it, it, not and like on a nice day like this, the problem is that putting stuff. shade yeah. on the solar panels, yeah. so then it offsets. You know, maybe at night it produces maybe two, three amps. It's when okay. This, when it's stormy, it's good, but then it's not stormy every day, right? No, Unless you are in like a, you know... And in people hate there. them because of the noise. You know, they make that whirring noise. And then you're, you're like trying to sleep. For me it's perfect because that's my sign when I need to go check on the anchor. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go check on the anchor. You have two wind yeah. generators or one? We have two. 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 Yeah. So we have one on each side, but... Yeah, I wouldn't if I if I designed that system again. That's that would not worth it. Yeah, that would disappear. Yeah, the other problem we have a lot of that we hear of is anchoring problems, windless problems. Our windless gave out. So, yeah, every single component really, uh, you know, and that's what's so great about this class. You're learning all those. All those things. You need to know about your chemistry. <laughs> Make sure you know about all the tables. Very yeah. important because yeah. otherwise you can mess everything up. I was yeah. told every class, uh, Albert breaks it down to the electrons. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Very important. It's true. It's true. You need to know that's a really good base. Yeah. Yeah. You here, guys? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Memorize it. I mean, do it. Yeah. He was like, oh, I remember this from high school, but what is it? So he needed to review, and then it's funny. I'm working, and it's like the teachers was like, "What? You're gonna remember all that?" And he was really drilling it. And listen, guys, that really paid off because out in the middle of the ocean, yeah. it was like, oh, "No, you cannot mix mix those two." It's like, "How do you know that?" No, because I remember from for the class. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, there's a lot of that, yes. like uh, in uh, uh, incompatible metals, you know, especially on the engines. Yeah, that's oh, for the other man. group. They just got done with the corrosion. Yeah. yeah. It's an everyday effect. Right? It's, so it's, this is then a you can't get the bolt out. You know, they'll, they'll put like, if they don't use stainless steel for whatever reason, then the bolt freezes up and you can't get it out. It breaks off. Then what do you do? You know, uh, uh, things like that. Getting bolts off, that's like, I don't know, when I was taking those engines apart and overhauling them, half the bolts were like frozen yeah. in there. And the hardware, but yeah. quality. Yeah, and they they think, you know, part, these part. engines aren't cheap, so, you know, why are they using these zinc bolts? Yeah. You know, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. More, more profit for them. Zinc yeah, plated. I guess yeah. so. You know, I guess, you know, a stainless mm -hmm. bolt, and then there's the huge difference between 304 and 316. Correct. And so whenever you're putting in new hoses, that's, like, real important. I mean, you can get on Amazon the hose clamps 304 for, like, dirt cheap, but they'll last you, like, six months, and then they'll just break. So that that's like a big. It's incredible the amount of people that uh, never follow rules, no? About, yeah. About the material. Yeah. It's all about making money. No, and then also like you look at some of the people's engines, you look in there and they have like one hose clamp instead of two, things like that. Uh -huh. yeah. Now you can identify more. Yeah. Than most people don't. Know. Yeah, but you they don't look right, and then you're thinking like, oh wow, that's just gonna pop off, and your whole engine room is gonna flood, and you're gonna be in a world of pain, stuff like that. 
So uh, that, that could, and the way that I think when I took the class at least, the way that it was put together, the fact that we started off with the chemistry side of things, that really helped out when we got to other more advanced classes to understand, well, what could be causing this? Because I guess the most important thing that, that I learned and what I do every day is maintenance, right? So you can't just fix something and not figure out, well, what caused it in the first place? Because then, like, a week later, you got the same exact problem. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think you used to tell us that all the time, right? And you'd ask the customer, so what did you do? Like, these questions. So what exactly happened? Yeah, when so did it happen? You're doing the board. Is that the questions that you ask gives you a sense of direction and a little bit of understanding. Yeah, that's true. You know, right? That's true. So then, and then they would, they would oftentimes, I guess, fabricate a story. Oh, I didn't do anything. <laughs> you know? They always lie, especially if they, they're when they screwed it up. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and uh, I, I can't imagine uh, how many tools you have right now in your folder. <laughs> More tools than clothes. So, so we, have, we, have, we have three cabins. <coughs> Technically, we're supposed to get our family. Nobody has shown up because we use one cabin. And then the other two cabins are garage one and garage two. I, I have to kind of take, it's like Legos. You have to take all this heavy stuff, take it out, so many things. And then actually the boat, that's not good. It's too heavy on the port side. <laughs> it's no problem because it's a catamaran. <laughs> yeah, but you And know. then we lost weight, a lot of weight. I was just saying, you need to gain weight. And we, yeah, we exactly. lost a lot of weight too, so I gotta use that <laughs> grill more often. You know? so We're gonna have to put some of the tools now under the bed, but I don't know. But you can't have enough tools, yes. no, you can't. So Especially you're out there, no worries. Yes, in the, in the anchorage, everyone's like, Chris, do you have this? Chris, do you have yep. that? Because he has everything. Huh? So yes. one, I just yes. actually, every time I get a chance, I buy a tool that I just bought, was I always had a hard time, I mentioned before, tightening uh, the V-belts on the engine. So I would use you know, a crowbar and, and pull the alternator and then tighten it as quickly as I could. And so then I, heard about this little tool it's basically just like this it's a bolt and it just spreads the uh the belt apart the alternator and you just put it between the two different flywheels and you just tighten the bolt and boom problem solved like a I don't know, ten dollar thing like little things like that it just makes my life easier you know and uh, like you never know and i i i think you said it a lot of times, you have to manufacture your own tools. Correct. Like you cut off a, a wrench just to make, so you can fit into this place. So yeah, we have a lot of tools. And invest in good tools too. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, well, yeah. tools is, uh, you're, you're as good as your tools. But, yeah. 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 Like crappy tools. It's an investment. It's an investment. It's an investment yeah. for security. For you to be able to fix and, and your, not only and that, but in your job, right? Yeah, so how professional you are in front of your customers, your clients, and make sure that's that, correct. That's yeah, correct. that you that's correct. are not struggling with our tool. So it's funny, so uh, when we started, you get that list of the items that you should buy, and one of them is the Fluke multi gear which is... Oh, that look. Yes, it's not an inexpensive uh, device, not at all. Okay, so, the so I came <laughs> into the class with you know Home Depot special that cost like fifteen bucks. A lot or of you guys. <laughs> so I'm Sounds I don't know familiar. what we were doing and it wasn't reading anything. It was like some and so Mr. Wolf, why it just boom <laughs> put it in the garbage. Yeah, put it right in the garbage. And that is a very good thing. But he goes he uses that all the time. Use that all the time. And I know Something I can trust, can trust it mm. and not get some yeah. wacky reading or it doesn't work or whatever. And so that, you know, there's, you go and do a job and all of a sudden you got this joke tool, then your whole job's at stake and customers like looking at you like, what is that? So. And, uh, and uh, I think the other important thing is uh, in some cases, you don't need to solve it or fix it that because you have a contractor, but you know, what he is doing exactly. yeah. and you can say to him hey no 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 yep. don't replace the pump the pump is good don't touch yeah. that only this one please yeah exactly. because you know no I, exactly so when i did the solar like i said i'm not that good that i trust myself 100 percent. so i like to work with a contractor but when we put the solar together all the wiring we did that as a team uh -huh. so that was really important because whether we wired in series or in parallel and the gauge of wire that we used and wire run and to measure that and also one of the interesting things for example about lithium batteries is 
the cable run, not only do you have to worry about the gauge, but also the length of the cable run. We have three of those batteries, and they're in parallel, so every single cable has to be the same exact length. They can't be like not even an inch apart because the oh, electrons very travel important. at light speed. Yeah. And if there's even just one little inch of a difference, then the batteries get out of whack. No, it's double less, yeah. And so like something like that, you would never think about it. AGMs we had in there beforehand, and I wanted to use the same cables because they're like four odd cables, so they're expensive. And uh, so I wanted to use the same cables, and then, you know, the, uh, the guys working with saying, no, you can't do that, you know, because look, this one's like six inches shorter. So we had to replace them all, and you know, that was, that was uh, At the end of the day, if, if you are well prepared, uh, if you have a good relation, living a boat is nice, no? Oh, yes, yeah. it is. Yes, it's, he blood pressure went down. Yeah. <laughs> he lost weight. True. Yeah, yeah, it's like the healthiest <laughs> lifestyle move I have made. Was, yeah, I lost like 25 pounds. My blood pressure went down. Yeah, it's 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 good. No, it is kind of like we needed it. Yeah. Yeah, we needed uh, what is your idea for the next coming years, two years, well, three years? We don't kill each other because <laughs> <laughs> we're both captains, so yes. we'll be at sea, and it's like. No, we should do this, and no, we should do that, and then usually it's whoever has the that helm. That creates a conflict. Yeah, so we whoever have, is touching the helm it has authority. Yeah, that's who has the authority. <laughs> Those are the rock paper scissors. <laughs> Sometimes. So we're we're down in the boats down in Bon Air. So now you know we have to be down there during hurricane season because otherwise the insurance won't cover us. So we were down there since July. Now we're going to sail the boat back up to Puerto Rico. That's the plan. The weather has to cooperate with us. And we'll continue that journey down yeah. the islands. Then we're go but then if we don't make it, we'll go back down and then go up. Yeah. So then basically we'll try to be sailing around for three years. Uh -huh. And then we're, we'll see how we are on the, on the budget. Then probably do some you know, side you know, work. And if we, we really like it, we're probably going to continue sailing. And we're going to cross the Panama Canal and go into the South Pacific. Nice. Otherwise, you know, um, then we're going to try to buy a small place, right? And then try to, you like the mechanics, so probably you're going to go full-time for mechanics. Can't, I can't even yes. think about moving back on land again. That's, yes. that's, I don't know what I would do, you know, what I yeah. would do, sit yeah. at home watch TV, yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but uh, what is uh, your, uh, your, uh, your recommendation for uh, people interested to start with a project like this? What is yeah. your number one recommendation? So, I think... Don't be afraid of it. Doesn't matter what your budget is. We met we met a guy out there. He's from Israel. He had like no money to his name. He went and bought no a boat. passport. No passport. <laughs> he no bought passport. a boat in Le Haifa and he sailed it all Atlantic the way no from Israel to down there where we in Curacao. Mm -hmm. He paid like three thousand dollars for his sailboat. Oh, we don't know. It. So and he didn't know anything about sailboats. He used it, he had a motorcycle before. That's about all he knew. Mm -hmm. And so we and we met a few people like that. So, I mean, they're young, they're a lot younger than us, so they can do these things. But I think, you know, for people to sit and, you know, put their dreams off, whatever your dream is, and wait for, I don't know, fair godmother to show up with a pot full of money or something like that, that's not realistic. So, you, you know, if you have a dream, pursue it, invest in it, really focus on it. Otherwise, you know, if you're not, if you're, if your brain's all over the place and you focus here and you focus there and you don't focus on your dream, well, then all of a sudden you'll end up old like me, like 56. And then, you know, it's like almost game over at that point. You know, so you start getting, like my mother likes to say, if you wake up in the morning and something doesn't hurt, you're probably dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so there, you know, there's a limit to, you know, how long you can do these things. So... Like we've met people from all sorts of backgrounds, from people with no money to multimillionaires with big boats. The interesting thing is we all speak the same common language. We all have boat problems, pretty much all same, same anchorage, problems. same store. Yeah. You know, yeah. we all share the same, you know, lagoon. The same food. The same yeah. food. Uh, I mean, they are. We are all on the same level. What is really refreshing is everybody's on the same level. Um, really focus on what you're doing, right? study you know these are really good base guys you know because it will give you a lot of opportunities not only to yourself personally to fulfill you but you can earn some good income 
Right. Yeah. That. And yeah. you can offer your service. That's what I'm thinking. If I do the saleable thing, I would probably bring my tools and just of course, work in different arenas so just, just because I want to work in this country. Absolutely. Here. Everybody needs it. And work guess what? In in a lot of these islands, they take the Americans to get their residency yeah. there easier than any other country. Uh, like in Curacao. They give you more opportunity to stay for longer yeah. periods of time. And then, and then you can just, like with this guy that we met uh, from France, he sailed down there for, from France. And now they like give him the slip in the marina, and he just lives there, and he fixes people's problems. You know, and he knows he knows everything. There was a guy that bought some 68 foot giant sailboat, an older guy, and he had to change the through holes while the boat was in the water. You know, so that's right. kind of tricky. Go. But Mask you know, he dove out, and the the owner banged the old quick. bronze things <laughs> out. Yeah, real quick. And it was the the owner was a surveyor. But he was like, he had uh, some health issues, so he needed some help. Well, he's so he's not young enough to be able to do this. You guys yeah. are young. You can all do all the things, you know, to offer service. Yeah. And from the female side, what is the recommendation for the ladies? You for the ladies. <laughs> well, you know, you have to be very patient. <laughs> Too much. And then, no, no. You have to technically take it all, all in and uh, try to make the best of the budget as well. So yeah. try to help with the, you know, the finances. Try to. Uh, I took classes too. I took classes because to say if something happened to him, you know, I need to step in. Exactly. So then I'm always learning. Okay, tell me what you're doing, right? And I have my cheat sheets. Yeah. Because uh -huh. if he falls ill or, or, or he, you know, yeah, you don't know. he you fainted, you know, I really need to know. So then I did take some classes at the beginning uh, when we had a, another boat, and then I had to one time take cross the boat from Las Bahamas to Miami on my uh -huh. own, uh -huh. and then. Um, I also took the captain classes as well, and then because he always screamed at me, do this and that, and then so I learned a lot of the theory, and now I'm the one telling him, you're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, you really need to really, uh, I, I never learned, he was a cook, I never cooked, so yeah. now I'm learning how to cook. Oh, really? <laughs> You're yes. the, the chef? Yeah, now yeah, he's not. I'm just doing proteins. I'm the grill guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he became, you know, because he was a cook before, now I took up on that job uh -huh. because now he's the mechanic and then he's really busy with that. So I take over other things that I didn't do before and I try to learn from him and then uh, the budget, you know, and I, yeah. keep, I keep account of all the, you know, how, administrative how you, stuff. How you mm -hmm. uh, mm, solve it with mm -hmm. situation when you fight? It's difficult. Well, yeah, Cameron, you go on that side. <laughs> <laughs> you go on that side. <laughs> what side? <laughs> you, you figure uh, you it out. No. <laughs> is it, is I have it, to go sleep in the garage. <laughs> is it, is it happy hour tools. yet? Oh, it's happy hour. Oh, like okay, in Australia it's already one o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> power park somewhere. No, what we do is guess what, right? So besides, because the projects could be overwhelming. What we try to do is, what is it that both of us like doing besides just solving the problems on the boat? Guess what? We go for a swim, go diving, go snorkeling. Let's go try to go fishing, you know? Yeah. So we try to do activities that is not gonna cost us money that are right in front of us, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, mm -hmm. come, sometimes we are with a problem, we're trying to figure out what it is, so it's like, let's just put it aside, let's go for a swim. Yeah. Then all of That's a sudden, your mind will clear, and it's like, oh, it was so stupid, it was so simple, you know, it was like yeah. this thing, you know, yeah. clear your mind, because sometimes you go around in circles, so sometimes I have to remind him, it's, it's okay, you know, we're going to fix it, don't worry, you know, we, we don't have, we don't have this rush, you mm -hmm. know, time pressure, you know, don't put that time pressure, right, so when you're working no, with a client or something, or try to like, oh, I need this for tomorrow, it's like, you know, take your time, you know, do it right. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's important, that recommendation. It's better to get you yelled at for taking... Priorities, no? Exactly, priorities. It's better, it's, better it's better to get yelled at for taking a little bit longer exactly. than them breaking down. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Don't let anybody... I tell customers all the time, it's okay, you can be mad at me for taking a little don't bit longer. Let them, don't, let let anybody right, take, don't, some, don't let anybody put pressure on you, not even your relatives. It's like, where are you going to be? And we're going to be like, we don't know. You know? Uh -huh. Wherever the wind goes. Exactly. Yeah. Which is true, the <laughs> island time, you know? It's like, just let it be, you know? This is what it is, and, you know... Yeah. Eventually, it will be solved. The good you know? thing is having the skill set that you learn here, mm -hmm. that you can apply it and use it. You have, I can tell you, you're having fun with it. You're learning, oh, exactly. it. and the more you do it, the more you'll hone that skill, yeah, exactly. and you'll feel more confident with yourself. Because really, 
you have the skill. It's just you you doubt yourself because you you're not like you say you're not charging money yet because you just don't feel that confidence yet. But that will come with time. The more you do yeah, it, and then... absolutely. I mean, I think you know when you're down in that hole in the engine room and doing your in your, yoga. Your, your yoga, your boat yoga. You know, sometimes like, wow, man, this is like a pain in the ass. But then when you're finished with it, and it's you that did it, it's incredibly gratifying. You know, it's, it's like, you did it, you know what you're doing, it's, and then you just go from there. Then, you, you know, you become very self-confident from that. You don't have to, your judgment, you know you can trust it yourself. That's incredibly rewarding. You know, there's not really many, uh, I think, professions out there that give you that opportunity. If you just like look around. Most people, ourselves included, beforehand, you do a job and you have like a, a little, you know, it's like a very small little thing that you do there every day. Oh, uh, nice. But in this field, you really have to it's understand it's all yeah. these things that how they fit together and what caused the problem. You got to start there and how to diagnose it you know like you guys always say it's not repetitious both doctors. Everything, it's, everything's different right? every time and yeah. it's like i think you used to say like if you go to the doctor and you're going in for one thing and you know he sees a giant lump on your neck and he doesn't say anything about it well what kind of doctor is that right so mm -hmm. and then uh, also if you if you end up running your own business and, and you know your name is basically uh your calling card and you build that confidence and trust in your client base, they're always gonna call you back. You know, they're, they're gonna trust you no matter what it is. And you know, I think nine times out of 10, unless uh, you know, it's somebody that knows what they're doing, the general problems, they're pretty easy to diagnose and fix. You know, there's some things that take longer, but most of the problems, at least in the marina that we were at, the other people that were the owners there, I would ask them, you know, afterwards, oh, so what did it end up being? And it was like something like a dirty injector or, you know, a fuel line problem, like things that totally you're going to be able to fix when you're finished with this class and diagnose, real important, and, and make, I think, the customers when, happy. When you, when, you, when you stabilize the boat, when you understand the boat, when you have a good tool, uh, when you know the boat, uh, Living in the boat is less expensive than uh, living in your home. So, somebody asked us that yesterday. We have a we have a limited or a fixed budget now that we're not working, and so we have a, a certain amount of money that we can spend all the time, and and so we don't live here anymore. And uh, so the question was from one of our friends. So what's cheaper? Well, it's about the same because where we spend our money, uh, I think about a third of our expenses that we have in our budget is just for boat maintenance, it really is. Then a big chunk is insurance. Those are the two biggest things. Insurance for the boat, health insurance, and the boat maintenance. The food, yes, one island's more expensive than the other. I'm down to three beers a day, that's that's my budget, so I can't have more you than that. You still, man. <laughs> Make your own that helped here. Um, but other than that, yeah, I mean, it's it's really those two components are the biggest part. Yeah, right? but then I would say that actually, you know, it's less definitely because it's we, less. one of the first things that I noticed is like when we came back, so we've been sailing for six months, everything is so expensive here now. The fuel, I said, it would be impossible for us to live on land mm -hmm. because we could not afford it. With the budget that we have, we could not live on land. We can live on the boat because we don't need to plug into anything because we are self-sufficient because we have the solar, we make our own water. So we could be for months on the water. So, and that deters my husband for going shopping. <laughs> so, because he has going shopping for parts. So it's like, yeah. okay, just- Tools, for tools, for cars and groceries. Yeah, yeah and for, yeah. That, for the beer. <laughs> so it's like, if you stay an anchor, you definitely, if you're not on land, everything is easier and then, there's that's a big community, so you're from boat to boat. There's so many things to do. And people help each other out. Yeah. They help yeah. each other out. You know, it's a, a lot of that the kit that came from Israel. You know, like the solar panel is nearly, you know, it's like three fourths the size of the boat, and then that guy made it. But then guess what? We have an extra, you know, gauge. We have an extra thing. We can give yeah. us stuff. Yeah, you know, we help help, around, help, you know? help each other yeah. out. And then he he helps back by helping out, climbing out, you know, helping with the sales. So somebody has a sewing machine, the person will help you, then you have another tool. So everything is like a, a bartering, yeah, right? It's a nice so you don't order. deal with the cash, you just yeah, like pass on, you know. Yeah. 
you just pass on the favors, basically. That'll cost you three yeah. So yeah. here, there's no such snapper. a thing, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, here, I mean, another thing that was like very refreshing too is like, good morning, good afternoon, everybody yeah. helps. Here, it's like, in our building, I try to say hi, people are not looking at you, everybody's in their phones, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. everybody's stressed out because, you know, the inflation, we, there's a lot of... Are that you're completely disconnected from we the world? Yeah, yeah totally we, we don't... Well, you know, the Wi-Fi is very expensive. It's Some expensive. people went out there and got this Starlink thing, or one guy did, so that he has this high speed. But then I'm, we were talking about it, like, we don't really want that. That's really one of the reasons why we But well, we tried to be the Is it expensive? Yeah. No, I mean, he paid like $600 is. for it, and then it it's is. like $135 a month. Years will be oh, and then I'm asking him, so what's he doing with it? Well, he was watching Netflix. So I'm like, wait, yeah. so he came all the way down here to sit on the phone and watch Netflix? All right. You, know, you have Netflix here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like, for some people, it's about reinventing their whatever they're used to and wherever they're from on the boat. For other people, it's like, nah, it's like completely different. That's kind of where we are. And, uh, you know, we enjoy that. Like, we do watch YouTube uh, at night. Mr. Lopez is in that Mr. Lopez's <laughs> classes and, and really the other sailing sailing people that are out there to understand what they're going through. But other than that, no, we don't. Yeah, we don't. We don't we're, like, very, very disconnected from everything. And yeah. I, I like that, personally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but that's definitely cheaper, I, I would uh, say. Okay. You know, Chris was okay. saying, well, it's a budget. I mean, we did invest it on well, the boat. We got So they prorated. Mm -hmm. Prorated for several years, it's gonna pay off later on because if we're gonna do this for three or five years, it will pay. Like right the off. solar the rebuild you know? was thirty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Okay, so that mm -hmm. was like, but it's an investment. So then right. the value yeah. of the boat. So it's like yeah. For that reason, say, I say, mm -hmm. yeah. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. when the equation is exactly. equilibrated, mm -hmm. probably it's less expensive. Of the course, yeah. No. yeah. Especially yeah. because we have, we have to pay for fuel. Yeah. We don't have to be, you know, going a hundred miles or going to another marina and putting your life at risk because you need to collect Correct. in, you Correct. know. Correct. You just have it calm, you just take it easy. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean that was actually one of the calculations. So to plug in at a marina, first of all you gotta pay for the marina, which is like fifty dollars a night. And then you gotta pay for electricity, and which is a dollar a kilowatt hour. So maybe when you're plugged in, you're using like 10, 20 kilowatt hours. So that adds up. You save so then like all around of a sudden it's like 100 hours a day. You, you just because you don't have a solar system. You save system. like around so. $1,500 for just being on, on anchor. Yeah. You know, oh. Being on a marina very easily yeah. without anything else. Yeah, like the month that we were, we, we spent two months in a marina in Curacao, because mm -hmm. waiting for a family that never came because the airfare was too expensive. But then when we were on the anchor, we didn't spend anything except for food. I mean, it was unbelievable, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, cool. it's good. Mm -hmm. Chris, Sammy, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. thank you very much. It was good, no? It was mm -hmm. nice. Uh, your experience. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, the yeah. best thing was you came from knowing nothing yeah. Yeah. to where you yeah. are today. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's what's really the... the yeah. He, was always, he nice. was always curious, right? So curiosity, you know, curiosity helps as yeah. well. Yeah. That's so, so thank you both for um, everything thank you. Oh, talking oh, in those two years. Yeah, well, you're going to have right? yeah. 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 Time went by real fast. Probably the most valuable uh, classes I ever took. In, uh, I went to college and all that, but what you learn here is just invaluable and it's actually useful. <laughs> and then my husband never read a book before in his life. Yeah. Never, never, I never. Like he read. never, he never read. He would read. <laughs> what are you doing? He's actually reading. I had to take a picture and tell it to his mother, look at his family. Look, he's actually reading for the first time, you know? <laughs> because it's something that he was really you know, curious about and he enjoyed and he could put in practice. Yeah, that's yes. I have the same problem. If I read something that we're not just that's exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I hope your uh, next week is uh, mm -hmm. from. It's going to be from to the north. Yeah. To the north. So okay. you had to yeah, to Puerto Rico sometimes. Yeah, Virgin yeah. Islands and then all the islands. If the Christmas winds, which are really strong winds, start early, we're just probably going to stay down there. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you have Chris's uh, information. Yeah. You yeah. know, you guys are welcome to, you know, you can share with, you know, if somebody wants to ask questions to Chris, you know. And Thank you, Chris. To go to Puerto Rico. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. It was, uh, mm -hmm. was uh, productive. It's nice and, that you yeah. see this because you see someone that knew nothing. To where he is now, he fixes everything on the boat. 
everybody in the, in the anchorage to ask him for things. Oh, really? You know, questions, you know, what is this, what is that? And then the, most people don't know, like Chris say, so that's your opportunity to offer your services to, and do your internships. I mean, if you really have the opportunity, that would be... That's, that's just fine to your skills. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's really good. So, yeah. you know, we wish you uh, best of luck. Your, your skill set is so important. Maybe you don't even realize how important it is or how unique it is. There's a lot of self-taught people out there that really don't know anything. What's the saying? Uh, labor isn't cheap, but cheap labor, something like that, right? You pay what you get for. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you pay what you get. So, so and finish, finish, get your certification, finish. get your certification. Yeah. Oh yeah, for yeah. Sure. yeah. Don't, yeah. don't let up on that. It's and there's so many different roads you can go down. Do air conditioning. You do the NEMA, you could do just anything. You do electrical hydraulic. side, hydraulic, diesel, gasoline. There's so many, and pick out you know which one you like the best. There's just a lot of opportunities out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's, in some cases, the people say, "No, I don't need that. You need it." Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you guys.